Hello. Hello, everyone. I think we're live. We've had a few little technical difficulties, but I think we're now live. Let me know in the chat, please, if if I'm actually on. I've had a few issues with the program that I use to stream. So um, just let me know and we'll crack on. Hello, I think, hi Sean, I think we're live. Okay, cool. So, thank you for tuning in to everyone here. In the last video, we uh, sketched the start of a camera. And I'll be honest, I didn't really sketch much of the camera because I got uh, carried away with answering questions from people in the comments, which was really fun for me. Um, but I didn't get as much sketched as I wanted to. So today, I'm going to try and find a better balance between um, answering questions, which I love doing, and actually getting some sketching done. So I think if I move this out the way, we've got Inception going on, and then close this, and close this. And you should be able to see my screen. I'm also going to bring up the uh, feed on my phone just so I can see people in the comments. Uh, I want to start answering some questions as well. So how's everyone doing? Um, thank you for joining in. Okay, cool. So in the last video, what we did was, uh, let me just see, we sketched the thumbnails of some cameras, just the front of the cameras, really rough. And then I started to bring that into a 3D shape um, with, I tried to very vaguely explain how you can draw an ellipse and how perspective works. I don't know how uh, accurate I was with that description or I don't know how helpful I was. But this is where we ended up so far. So the idea of this camera, it's not meant to be anything realistic or not meant to be anything that's going to change the world or anything like that. It's just going to be a simple camera design uh, just to have a little bit of fun and to just start drawing some stuff. So the idea is that the um, with the, the, the things like the iPhone and the pixels and the, all the all the different cameras on phones with the different camera modules, I was wondering maybe what would it look like if, if that was on a, a camera. So you're kind of flipping the genre a little bit. So it's not a phone with multiple cameras. It's multiple cameras in in, in the camera, if that makes sense. Uh, so that's pretty much what the concept was. Uh, we, we got it to this sort of really rough um, shape. And uh, today I'm just going to start cleaning it up and, and getting going with it. I haven't warmed up today sketching. Uh, so let me just uh, maybe come down to the pencil that I like to use. So warming up is going to be really important, especially to build up muscle memory. Just going to change some settings on the pencil. So in Procreate, which is what the app it, it, it's the app that I'm using called Procreate on the iPad. It has something called Streamline, and what that does is it's going to smooth out the lines that you're going to draw. Uh, it's okay that I'm drawing over this because I'm on a different layer at the moment, and we can erase that later on. And don't forget, if you're sketching at home, you don't need to sketch on a tablet. You don't need to sketch on an iPad. You can sketch with pen and paper, or on post-it notes, or on kitchen roll, or anything you can get your hands on. Uh, and I... Mess uh, some people messaged me on Instagram after the session last week and said, uh, you know, sent me the pictures of what they had sketched in the session. So if, if you've sketched stuff while we've been hanging out in the session today, then definitely send me those images. It'd be really cool to see those. I'm just going to delete that. Start again. Uh, I'm going to try and warm up as fast as possible. Have we got any uh, questions in the comments about design, about sketching, about life. <laughs> How is everyone doing out there? I'm going to quickly warm up. Without knocking the microphone. 
you want to see my portfolio. I've had quite a few requests lately for, um, I, I used to do videos like portfolio reviews and people would submit their portfolios and I would um, give some handy, friendly critiques. Um, would people find that interesting to, to go through that in, in this day and age? I can do more of those if people like. Uh, I don't want it to fall on, you know, I don't want it to seem like I'm not paying attention to what's going on on the outside world, you know. Uh, where do I download? Oh, so a few days ago I posted on my Instagram page saying that I've just tried uh, Spencer's new brushes. Uh, and they're really great at mimicking uh, the, the alcohol markers. So if you go to sketchyday.com, this is not a sponsored section. Um, yeah, I found them, oops, I found them really nice to use. There we go. And what I'm going to do, because we've uh, laid down the bare, the, uh, the bare bones and the, basically the underlay last week, I can just start and go ahead to actually fill in some of these lines with thicker sections. Trying to keep the ellipses nice and smooth. Okay, something like that. And then over here. I'm gonna flatten that off a little bit there. I've got an idea for what I might want to do with this section over on this side actually. And it means that I need to extend that out to there. I'm going to change it slightly. Now that we've got the underlay, we basically know vaguely where things are and we can decide to change the design as we're going. That's what, that's what I'm going to do here. And I can always go over these lines later on to thicken them up even more because it's quite important with a design, uh, with a with a design sketch to really show the thick and the thin lines, and to um, those thick and thin lines that I'll be using will really help to guide the eye, and to let the let whoever's going to look at this to know where to actually look at. Okay, so we've got this and what I want to do is kind of like create a rail that goes all the way around. Uh, so I'm just going to follow these lines along now. And start to make this rail. Because when you're designing cameras like this, like every product has uh, split lines of different components and those components are going to need to be made somehow. So if you can plan in, like where do your split lines run? Where does your, where do your material breaks run? And you know, if you want to have different materials, if you can plan all that in, in the sketching stage, then you're going to save a lot of time in, uh, in later stages. Okay, so we've got sort of like some rails going on. So I imagine that this outer piece that runs all the way around is like uh, maybe a metal or something like that. And this inner piece is like a plastic or a leatherette material. I'm, I'm not too sure yet. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's looking pretty good. I can start to sketch this button a little bit more over here. Uh, 
giving that a little bit of wall thickness. And then I can come in with the base that is normally pretty tapered on these cameras. The base of the button protrudes a little bit like this. I'm just kind of making it up as I go along at the moment. Mm, might have to make that a little bit smaller. because there'll be a straight line running along there. So yeah, got to make that a lot smaller. Which is the handy part of having a Procreate or an iPad or a sketching tablet because I drew that a little bit too big and I can just make it a little bit smaller. Okay, I think that's, we'll get away with that, I think. Uh, let's leave it at that for now. We can always come back to that a little bit later on. You kind of miss the portfolio reviews. Yes, yeah, so I can I can do some more. Um, I just know, I mean, it's, it's a tough time to be applying for a job full stop. And I get that, I really, I really get that. And I don't want to, I don't want to make it seem like watching my videos is a surefire way of, of, of getting hired, you know? But I can do some if people enjoy them. I mean, I guess it, it's good to like work on your portfolio even in these times, right? So I'd be happy to do those. Hey, Sam, how you doing? <laughs> oh, it's nice that everyone's saying hey to everyone in the comments. That's nice. I really enjoy this community. The 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 community feel that that I get whenever I interact with anyone online in the design sphere is so nice. So let me know where you're all tuning in from. And how are things going? Holland, hello. I don't know. I don't know anyone from Holland. Nice to meet you. So what I've done is I've drawn like where the radius would follow along. And I've realized that it doesn't quite line up at the bottom compared to what it does at the top. And I prefer the line at the top. So what I'm going to do is just try and tweak these a little bit. Let me do, let me. And I could have uh, fixed that issue if I'd have drawn. So like I was trying to say before that I was changing the design as I was adding in the, um, adding in the thicker line, I was changing the design and that that's meant that some things don't quite line up. So that should go about there, I reckon. And then I'm just going to get rid of this altogether because it's all wrong, but that's okay. Just erase some of that. And then because this is flatter, it's like flatter at the top. Let me see. It's going to be a little bit like this. No, too much. Let's do this one first. Bless you. Sorry. I think it's going to be more like that. Yeah, it's fine. That's fine. Uh, I can hide all of these mistakes with uh, with some nice rendering. Maybe next week I think we'll work on rendering. Let's just focus today on uh, on getting a nice line drawing. So I think let's add in where the radius starts and finishes over here. Okay. And now I've realized that because we haven't got our thumbnails anymore, I'm sketching really low on the bottom of the page. So what I'm going to do is select the two layers that I want to move. Mm, actually, no, I don't want to do that just yet. Because if I move things off the canvas, then it actually deletes them off the canvas. So um, I'm going to leave it there for just for the time being. 
We can move things around at the very end. Ooh. And what I like to do is like, if I'm pretty happy with one element of, of a sketch, I'll start a new layer so that if I start sketching over it and it turns out I don't really like it, I can always go back afterwards. Uh, okay, so what am I doing down here? This is gonna... One like this, follow the same radius in here. And then this is gonna... What I might do as well is, so I've based this camera arrangement on um, the iPhone 11. But what I might do is I've seen some rumors for what the iPhone 12 might be. And I might actually um, change the layout of the lenses just a little bit. I don't know, there's no, there's no need to have accuracy in terms of what the design is gonna be, but let's that down for now. So in that case, I, what, uh, so I was trying to describe ellipses last week. I did a pretty bad job of it, I think. Go and watch tutorials on how to draw uh, ellipses in perspective because it gets tricky for me to explain. But now that I've mainly got them plotted out, I can come down here, select maybe this one. Mm, no, select this one maybe, that's the clean one. Copy and paste, and now it's on a new layer and I can I can move things around and see. So that one's gonna go about there. Copy and paste that. That one's gonna go about there. Mm -hmm. And I reckon that will go about there. Okay, but uh, you'll see that they're all on different layers, so I can select them all and pinch those layers together. Oops. Maybe I can't. There we go. Pinch those layers together, and we can see that I haven't left quite enough uh, space in this rectangle. So I'm going to move these over just a little bit. And then on the layer that this is on, I can select these. And don't forget, like... I fully appreciate that I am cheating in uh, having an iPad like this. And I get that if I was sketching physically with pen and paper, that'd take a long time to fix. Um, so I get why some people say that sketching on paper is, is the more uh, realistic art form, but in design sketching, it's all about getting things done as fast as possible. So if you're sketching at home, potentially you might not be as talking as much as me and preoccupied. So maybe you'll uh, get things done faster, even if you're on pen and paper. And that's okay. So I'm just going to add in the, the rings that you find on camera phones. And the reason why I've left one blank is because in the rumors for the iPhone, the new iPhone 12, it's supposedly got a LiDAR scanner, which uh, I guess we can draw in, but a LiDAR scanner like scans the room and um, figures out like what is in the room. Like it, it, it's like a bat sonar thing. So I can draw that in maybe a little bit there. And then we can start to add in what, what we see inside the camera lens. So maybe I don't know, I think they're concave sections like that, that again, follow, we've already got the major and minor axis. So whatever we draw in these 
uh, whatever we draw inside these ellipses is going to follow those major and minor axes, so something like that. Draw in some lines just to say that they run inside. Erase that bit. Uh, it kind of looks like a boom box. Maybe I'm drawing a boom box instead of a, um, oops. Damn it, better touch tool. Skip this version. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. That was the most important bit of the sketch and you missed it all. No, I'm kidding. It's fine. Uh, thanks for letting me know. <laughs> it would be the same time that I don't look up. That's why I'm relying on you folks. So we're getting there with actually most of what I want to have from this sketch. Uh, I maybe need to add in some buttons on top. So we have just one button here for like the, the shutter button. Um, Maybe I'm just going to add in a few more dials and, and things up here. So where would they be? I've got my camera nearby. I've got my camera nearby. It may be useful to see what buttons they have. So one day I would like to go live on YouTube by hooking this thing up and filming like a, a, uh, like a real film set. I have no idea how to do that. So we're just on the webcam at the moment. So we have one twist dial at the top and then two buttons and another twist dial here. Okay, so I'm gonna draw, I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna draw this twist dial on top here, two buttons that are just pushed down and potentially a, a twist around the side as well. Um, Oh, I can do a small display. Yes, yeah, some cameras like the Canon, I think a lot of Canon high-end cameras have the uh, display. So that'd be cool. Oh. It's live. <laughs> I'm running around the place trying to find props that I should have on hand. Uh, yeah, so let me see. I'm gonna draw Mm, where where would it go? I think let's draw like a a spinning section just up here that can have a pivot point there maybe. So if the pivot point is right there in the body then it's going to be like something like that. So I need to draw just that section. I can clean up that. And then go back in and maybe adjust where that is pivoting around. Yeah, I don't know. It looks a bit weird over there, maybe. I think this whole thing needs to be um, like on the Sony one that I've on the Sony camera that I've got. This needs to be like the whole thing is visible is what I'm trying to say. I'm just going to line that up. And then come down to my lines for this and erase that. This is where I start to get confused with layers. So I'm going to bank the ones that I'm happy with and erase the bits that I'm not happy with. So this one would be controlled from the other side. So on the outs, so it's it's flush to the body at the moment, but on the on the back, it would have grooves and things in it to help you slide around. But I can draw graphics on these maybe a little bit later on. 
Um, or maybe next week. I'm scheduled to do three of these uh, sketching sessions. And I just thought it'd be fun to do three sketching sessions to, to build up the sketch each week. So it's three hours to do a sketch that should probably take about an hour normally. So I'm not in a rush. I'm here to hang out as well. Let me see. I think you guys are suggesting where the button should go. Let me look. Let me look. Uh, <clears throat> oh, question about university as well. Um, yeah, so I was really lucky in that the university that I went to was pretty similar to what I wanted to be uh, afterwards. And it, ha it let me do my internship and it let me, you know, get my foot on the on the career ladder. But I know a lot of people that went to university and, and then changed career paths. And that's OK. So, you know, everybody's different. Uh, I think that might be the only button I want. I'm going to add in a screen up here for like the display. So you can display things like the f-stop, the focal point, like all that. Uh, and my perspective's messing up a little bit here. I think the issue is coming from this line. I'm just going to select this. And I think it gets too wide. Oops. I'm not on the right layer. This one. I think it gets too wide, which throws off the perspective of the top. I think that's better and that's going to help us out over here because we were already a little bit too close to that button oops so again that's where the ipad is helping out just a little bit uh, let me see let me answer some questions do i always do Photo realistic renders for your client projects. How much detailing do you suggest for uh, objects and furniture? And when uh, comes the space renders? Um, that's a really good question. And so that what I used to post on Instagram a lot was really f as, as photo realistic as possible um, marker or like iPad sketches. Um, that doesn't really get used in client stuff that that's always just been for me because I enjoy drawing products. Um, but it, there does come a point when for a client, you need to try and sell the idea. So maybe it's not about rendering with, with pen and markers. Maybe it's about trying to show it in real life in something like key shot. So we use a lot of key shot in, uh, in our client projects. And we do interiors and stuff as well, but normally some stripped back interiors. Obviously, the, the more realistic you need it to look, uh, it's going to get a lot longer to do that. So what I normally, what we, or what, what I've done recently is like, imagine an interior or a, or a stage in a store that looks a little bit like an interior, but is is still definitely a stage. So it's like studio type thing so you don't need all the materials and the and the uh, and all the different um you can you know you can just have it a flat plastic material and put the product in there and you get the essence of space and spatial awareness without needing to go into all the details so i quite like doing that as well please do a, a, an instagram q a session soon yeah i'd like to do that as well the tricky thing with instagram q a is that um it doesn't store it afterwards. And if I if I save it to my phone, it's only in like 480p. So I'd have to record my... I mean, this, I get, my webcam is terrible. But at least YouTube keeps this at 1080p afterwards. Um, but yeah, I'd love to answer some more questions on, on Instagram. I've, I've missed doing that. Uh, put little grooves in the wheel. I think on this one, you'd only see the grooves from the other side. Maybe I, I should add a button somewhere else. There's actually a button down here. 
Maybe I add that in. On the on the Sony that I use, there's like a wheel here as well. So that's gonna come round like that. And you can see like grooves on that. So we can add that in. So the one on the back here is like when you're holding the camera, your thumb can scroll it. And the one on the front, when when your finger's there, your finger can scroll it. So uh, we've got we've got that covered. Is digital sketching uh, really faster than analog in order to communicate ideas and design? No, no, no. Um, it, it all depends on the person sketching. It depends on the type of sketching. If I was, if we were just sketching like the thumbnails, like these. Oops, got another layer turned on. If we were just sketching the thumbnails like these, 100% it's faster to do it in real pen and paper. And actually what I would suggest or what I, what I would normally do is print out a sheet that has this block, oops, that has this block uh, blocked out slightly like five or six times and um, on that sheet, then you can just quickly go over it. So you don't have to keep drawing the, um, the block over and over again. Or, you know, if you've got a, a battery and a PCB, print that out one to one and just keep drawing over it and over it on, on different sheets. That's probably the fastest way to do it. But I prefer to do these uh, sketches with a little bit more refinement. And uh, later on, if I start to add markers and things like that, I prefer to do it digitally but by no means is it faster for everyone to do that. Um, I just prefer it mainly because I, I enjoy using different tools and also because it's easier for me to show and um, share the sketches and, and show, show the process. Uh, if I was sketching physically on, on pen and paper, I'd have to set up a camera above, like the, there's a lot of setup to go into that. So it's just personal preference. Uh, you, you really, I cannot stress enough how much you don't need a tablet for, uh, for sketching in design. Uh, what am I doing here? I'm, I'm not really paying attention to what lines are thick and thin. So I'm just gonna thin these down a little bit. We don't want everything to be a thick line. I'm just gonna clean that up a little bit because I was preoccupied talking. So I wasn't paying attention. Okay, something like that, I reckon. That's probably okay. Um, okay, so I think we're getting there actually with uh, what I wanted to have. So maybe we'll start to add in some, uh, maybe we'll start to add in some shading. I have no idea what that means we'll be doing next week. I'm just gonna change the shape of this button. I think it was too flat. I think the ellipse was too, too flat. So I'll just open that out a little bit. I think that's better, but I've moved it now too close to. And the more you start moving things around and like, tweaking things and pulling things. You can tell that like this line here is a nice sharp line, whereas this is already blurred and a little bit pixelated. So sometimes I just have to go back in and clean that up. Oops, I shouldn't have done that. There we go. <laughs> Hello everyone tuning in as well. Uh, what's your most favorite design methods to use on your work? Hello from Indonesia. Hello, how are you doing? Um, I really, the, the things that I most enjoy doing is sketching and rendering in Procreate in, uh, sorry, I'm in Procreate now. Sketching and rendering in 
uh, key shot and things like that. I really enjoy getting a really realistic look. Um, so yeah, I just really enjoy trying to push the software as much. I like, I, I really enjoy learning new software. So that's probably why I, I sketch on, on tablet as well. I'm going to clean up some of these lines. Uh, and then I need to think about what materials I want to use. I think the outside, the outside should be uh, metal, like the iPhones are, or phones in general are. Uh, that's going to be flat black, so that can go. Okay, I think we're getting there. Oh yeah, I think I was in my head thinking that this area is really busy in terms of like thing that's going on, whereas there's nothing happening over this side. So yeah, maybe a camera like a, um, they come out like this. And then have like a hole like that. I think that that would work. Yeah, I think that balances it a little bit. I kind of like that this is becoming like a um, designed by everyone thing. That's pretty cool. People chipping in. I like that. Uh, soon to finish my first year of industrial design at uni. And I just bought an iPad to incorporate digital sketching. A bit to figure out how to combine analog and digital sketching. Oh, yeah, that's, that's cool. Um, congrats on finishing your first year of design school. That's really cool. And um, th th there are some there are some tips and tricks to, to incorporate analog. So like if you sketch the outline and then want to bring it into Procreate or, or something to sketch over. Um, obviously, if, if you just take a picture of it, then the white paper that you've sketched on normally comes out gray when you take a picture. So you have to change the contrast of it to try and make it look good. I've actually got a, a YouTube video on that to change the contrast of a, of a photo of a sketch to make it look like pure white here and, and, and black on, on the sketching stuff. I, but I have since found a better way of doing it. So I might re-record that, that video. Um, what I might do, uh, oh, I've completely forgotten how to do it. Add text, there we go. And I'm just trying to think what text appears on the screen at the top, because I can put that in and morph it into shape. So there's something about the f-stop. So maybe um, maybe 50 millimeter lens at f1.8. Maybe we'll read that. Then it then maybe it'll say. Uh, let's just lay this out for what I want. So let's add some more text. In fact, no, let's not do that yet. Let's figure out what font we want it to be. Because it's definitely not going to be this font. Edit style. And I'm trying to think of like what types of fonts appear on. Like it's normally a font like this, you know, on the on the black and white calculator type screen. I mean, I guess there's no. Oh, yeah. ISO. Good idea. I'll put that on as well. I guess there's no reason why this can't be like a, a good quality display. Futura looks weird in that instance. Mm. So if we're going to call it like a high quality display on top of this thing. Oh, I could be here forever, actually. <laughs> Comic Sans, yeah. That looks pretty camera-like, I reckon. Yeah, let's do that. And let's hide this, just for the time being, so we can... 
Uh, done. Yep. I want to edit this one. Done. Nope. There we go. Um, ISO 200. Okay. So we've got that information at the top. That's pretty important. And then maybe this one can be like maybe the files left black out of font maybe i should use papyrus have you seen this sketch about papyrus i think it's ryan gosling in it uh so let me see 2050 images left remaining And mm. let's say that that works out at 12 hours film. Uh, oh yeah, manual. There is so many things that we can change. Let me let me put all of this in in. Mm, I'm gonna want some things bigger than others. Maybe. Let's think about what's the most important information that needs to be seen at that specific time. Uh, edit style, I want that to be left aligned. Manual mode. Okay, let's get in there, I think. So what I'm gonna do is group those and then let me think sometimes, yeah, so I can like move it around and put it on the camera. So we bring the camera back. We're gonna to wanna to spin it upside down cause that's who's like, we need to have the, uh, it's important to the user of the camera, less so for us watching it. And I'm just gonna roughly like that. We don't want to distort it too much, but we want to vaguely follow the perspective lines that we've already put in there. Uh, and that message just popped up just to say that we've rasterized the text. So now that now that we've put it in a weird shape, I can't change it again anymore, but that's okay, I think. Um, there's a weird line there, just get rid of that. Let me see, we've got some more questions. Uh, like iterative design, basic design process, can sign method, method, many kinds of design that are more than practices. I don't know about the Kanzai, the Kanzai mes method. Uh, I, I should probably check that out. It sounds interesting. I've always done like the, yeah, iterative designs. We got taught the double diamond technique, which I've got videos on on my channel as well. Um, all about divergent thinking, convergent thinking, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I, I, maybe I need to research more about that. I'm sorry, I can't really answer the question, but I've just always used iterative designs. Uh, what is your goal as a designer? Oh, wow, I don't know. I'm just having fun. That's my goal is to have fun. That's definitely my goal. Um, I really enjoy making these videos and if I can do, if I can carry on continuing to be able to make these videos for a long time, then I'll be happy. Cause I enjoy these, you know, I enjoy 
the community. I enjoy sharing information. I enjoy hearing that something that I've said has helped someone in their design. So if I can continue doing this, yeah, I'll be pretty, pretty happy. I'm just going to do an outline of the shape for the color that I want. So it's going to be this medium gray color. And I'm just going to do an outline of it. Like this. Like that. Oops. And once we get it blocked in, we can not the time nor the place Fritz Hansen, Fritz whatever the name is. Uh, a little timer light right beside the lenses. Yeah, that's a good idea as well. Maybe for like, I mean, I know on the on the um, the phone. I think. Oops, I think they're gonna have something like the flash here. But you could have that as like whatever, you know, if it's you've got a self timer or something. Maybe that's a bit big, just make that a bit smaller. So that could be either, maybe that's like split. The top half is. Mm, a, a, an LED flash for like self timer. The bottom half might be the microphone. I don't know. I'm gonna add in some thickness to, and you'll see as I'm drawing these, like I vaguely get the ellipse potentially vaguely in the right spot, <laughs> but then I can edit that which is why I enjoy using the uh, the iPad so much. That's just gonna be something that just catches the a highlight. There we go, something like that. Yeah, can you turn the light on? <laughs> Thank you. Now that I'm actually sketching, there's a lot less talking from me. Last week, I was talking so much. Now that I actually need to get something done, otherwise I'm going to be in week three with nothing actually sketched. I just find it difficult to multitask, I guess. Hmm. Okay. Something like that adds a bit more fidelity. And I, at the moment, I know that I've got these cones in here that look like they're going inside the body, but I will be adding like glass reflections over them so that it doesn't look like it's going in in the end. Uh, but yeah. Uh, would you recommend getting an iPad or a graphic tablet? I've personally used, well, mainly iPads I've used, but I have also used, um, oops, that was on the wrong layer. I've also used Wacom Cintiqs uh, at university. And obviously, you know, the, the huge Wacom Cintiqs are great for um, being able to sketch big things and you know get good arm movement and things like that but the portability is just not there i really prefer the ipad because i can be at home sketching just like i am now but i know that there are some some great tablets out there that now work in in similar ways of like being portable and things like that but i haven't really had chance to try them maybe i, sh I should go and try some these screens are normally like a little bit green, I think. Maybe that's too green. I'm still imagining this as like a, a screen that's on a, an existing camera 
that's normally like a calculator screen, but I think we can change it to be, maybe we can change it to be like an OLED screen, really fancy screen. Talking about Kanzi, Kanzai, Kanzi. I need to look that up because I have no idea what that is. This Procreate, yep, I'm sketching in Procreate. Slowly, because I'm answering questions and just hanging out. <laughs> Thanks for everyone to, for tuning in. Uh, yeah, so the, the idea of this camera is that it's got all the lenses it might possibly need in it already. Um, there's no real reason for it, but I just wanted something different to draw. The original concepts that I had, uh, let me hide these. The original ones were really not much different to normal cameras, but I thought, you know what? Let's just have a little bit of fun with it. What if, what if it's got all the lenses already in it that you don't need to change them out? You want me to make the screens fancy? Okay, let's do it. So we can do something called, like if we have a dark screen, maybe not completely black, but dark. And then we can come over to, make sure that I'm on the right layer, come over to recolor, move the cursor. And then that shows up that I wasn't quite accurate with um, outlining, but that's okay. And it looks like the text has disappeared, but I can come over to the text. What layer is my text on? Oh yeah, it's up there, I forgot. Uh, I might need to rasterize this layer, flatten. Change that to a, a white or something. Recolor, done. There we go. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Fancy. Uh, okay, let's see. Let me let me think about what I'm doing here. I'm gonna block in some colors. I just need to decide what if this inner section is gonna be lighter or darker than the bump thing, and I think it's gonna be darker slightly. So I'm gonna make sure I'm on a new layer with nothing on it. And at this stage, it's about blocking it in exactly the same way that you would block in with markers. But the difference is I can block in with 100% of whatever color I want to use instead of the markers, which are slightly transparent. Okay, so with that blocked in, there we go. It hasn't quite got everything, so I can just go back around a little bit real fast. And I, I know I always get questions about, you know, pro, is, is digital sketching faster and is it more efficient and all this. And, I've, and it's taken me like two hours to get to this point, so it's not a very good advertisement for it, but I'm not rushing at the moment. I'm just having some fun. Cintiq Pro. All right, but sometimes I will boot it to find the calibration. Oh no. That's the good thing about, I guess, an iPad that, I mean, some of the, like, it doesn't even need to be an iPad Pro. Like the iPad Minis and the, the, the standard iPad with, with nothing else after the name, they all work with the Apple Pencil. Um, it's just down to preference, I think. I would not know where to start to uh, think about calibrating this thing. 
I think the closest we can get as Apple users is I can replace the, the tip of this pen, this pencil, but that's it. That's, that's all I can do. That's the most tweaking I'm allowed to do. Okay, what I'm going to do, add a new layer and clipping mask, which means that whatever I sketch, it's only going to be visible if layer 9, they're both called layer 9, but if it's only going to be visible if there's information on that layer. So what I mean is, if I have this red pen, I can sketch, oops, wrong layer, I can sketch anywhere, and it is sketching, it is there, but because I've told it only show if it's like this little arrow means only show this layer for what is on the layer underneath. That makes no sense. But that's what it ends up doing. So the, the, the clipping mask means that it's only going to show whatever is underneath. So I can clear that. Delete. Clipping mask. Oops. There we go. And I can start to add in my highlights and shadows, which is what I want to do. So I don't really know what style I want this uh, sketch to be just yet. Maybe use an airbrush. And I can just really quickly, let's say that I want this to be a little bit shiny so I don't think it's going to be quite big enough. And I'm just going to, I can sketch from high up and pull down and go past the, uh, past wherever I need because we've got that clipping mask. I can do it again, clipping mask. This time it's going to be slightly darker because I want to get in here. Maybe too big. There we are. And there. That's already looking like there's a lot more. Uh, you can tell what the shape is a lot more just by adding those two little things. Uh, and I can just carry on going throughout the whole thing. Uh, maybe down here, I'm going to add in a clipping mask, reference whatever this color is and bring it down slightly. And then again. And... Don't want it on that front face so I can just erase from there. I don't really want it past the fillet at the top so I can erase that. That's getting there already. Something on this, clipping mask. A whole lot of guesswork, yeah. <laughs> That's how I use computers as well, just and hope there's an undo button if it doesn't work. Oops. I want this one to be a little bit more chrome. So I'm just gonna bring the size of the brush down because there's gonna be more detail in this. Go away, Wall Street. <laughs> the news, I don't want any news. Mute that. The other thing as well is that I've got Do Not Disturb turned on all the time on this iPad, but because the iPad is open and I'm using it, it thinks I want to see all the notifications, which is not the case at all. So sorry for the pop-ups, everyone. I'll try and figure that out for next time. 
So because I want it to be chromed, I'm going to have quite a lot of um, contrast, although I think this is, is too much contrast. So I can actually just go up here. Let's dial that back just a little bit. I haven't really decided where the light is coming from. I guess it's coming from, oops. I guess it's coming from this way because this is in shadow. This is slightly in shadow. So that means that underneath this, there will be a slight shadow. Figure out the shape. Now I can go to change the opacity quite a lot. Also blur that just a little bit. Inside there will be some dark elements. and some light elements. And also on top, I just want to spending way too much time on just on this little thing. I'm going to move on. I'll come back to that later. Uh, let's do the, I wanna try and tidy up. So let's group those. Uh, that goes in the group two. Where are we? This, this, and this can group. That is on its own. This and this can group. I can see that on the screen, everyone can. <laughs> uh, there we go. And let's start with, oops. Ellipse shape, push it into position, and fill it in. Same over here. <laughs> I should probably set a better example and try and make the ellipses better on the first try, but honestly, no one's judging me, right? We're all friends here. Oops. Okay. On top of that, I want to have quite a dark circle in here for the actual glass of what's going on inside.
Is everyone still here? We all having fun? Is anyone sketching at home actually? Let me know in the comments. I'd like to know if people are sketching. I was only meant to be here for an hour, actually. And it's seven o'clock now. Uh, so I can hang out for a little longer if you if you folks want. What do you think? What does everyone need to go and have dinner or lunch? I guess depending on the time zones. People in the east probably bedtime at the moment. Thanks for staying up. Okay, I'm just going to finish up doing what I'm doing here and then um, then I think we'll call it a day for today. I'm just going to make the, uh, the silver elements. Uh, what do I want? This. Copy and paste, move that down. Um, erase it from here. And then merge that down to there. And that's how you get Chrome really fast. It's just the same thing, I guess, over and over. 1 a.m.? Oh, I <laughs> go to sleep. Still haven't had breakfast. My sleeping pattern's been all over the place as well. I feel that. Thank you for tuning in, though. I think what I'm going to do, 11 a.m., and I, 11 a.m. waking up is not being lazy. I woke up way past 11 a.m. today. Maybe I shouldn't be saying that. Maybe that's showing how lazy I've been this weekend. I think what I'm going to do is leave it here for now um let me try to bring in what the sketch looks like at the beginning of today um because i think we've we've brought it a long way we've done a lot even though i was chatting and hanging out we've taken it from this and we've turned it into this i think it's getting there uh, one more session next week is, is scheduled and booked in, in my calendar. Um, but I can carry on with, with more of these if people want as well. I mean, I'm having loads of fun doing these. Uh, let me know. Uh, as always, this is going to stay on YouTube for the next forever. I normally have to say that on Instagram because it stays there for 24 hours and then disappears. But this is staying on forever. Uh, thank you all so much for, for hanging out. For those where it's nighttime, go to sleep, get some rest. For those where it's morning, have some breakfast, have have a nice nutritional meal. Uh, I'm about to go and have some dinner as well. Uh, and yeah, thanks for thanks for hanging out. Um, nice and chill and relax. And I will see you here at the same time next week. Um, don't forget that if you share my videos with anyone, it helps so much. It, it helps me out so much. If everybody shared a video with a friend or two friends, then um, then that, that's going to really help a lot. So thank you all for tuning in. Um, thanks for hanging out in the chat and giving me the suggestions for what would make this camera really cool. And uh, yeah, I will chat soon. Thank you, everyone. Bye.